a genre is something that's supposed to be broad. Uh, it's like so big that it could cover a great deal of movies and so wide that it could have subgenres. So sectionalized categories that are both part of the broader genre, but also uniquely part of the subgenre. Horror, for example, is a massive genre, and it's not reliant on setting or even a specific subject, and sometimes not even tone in order for it to be categorized as horror. A horror film can take place in the past, like a gothic horror, like The Innocents, or it can take place in the future, like Alien. It can be about ghosts, it can be about vampires, and in tone it doesn't even have to be primarily scary because horror comedy exists and this subgenre is actually a big part of the larger genre. The western, the genre of today's topic, is actually amazing that we even call it a genre because a genre is supposed to cover a great many things and in a great many places and a great many time periods, but in order for something to be a western it needs to take place in a specific part of the United States and in a specific time. Uh, almost exclusively in the second half of the 19th century. Every genre has tropes and commonalities. For example, westerns often have cowboys and gunfights and old saloons and things like that. But beyond tropes that every genre has, westerns must take place at a certain time and must take place in a certain area of my country. Uh, it can be shot anywhere. It can be shot in a different country. Um, there were a lot of Italian Western movies, meaning it was shot in Italy or shot by Italian directors, but narratively it has to take place in America during a certain time and in a specific part of America. Even Sword and Sandals movies from way back when had more diversity than that. Objectively, Westerns should be a subgenre of drama or action because it's so narrow and so specific. But nobody calls it that. Nobody asks someone, hey, do you like Westerns? And here's back. Yeah, it's my favorite subgenre of action. Nobody says that, ever. Uh, but we call it its own genre because we just democratically decided it was. Um, it met the other criteria of being its own genre, popularity. I think its popularity in 20th century America owes a lot to it being the most American of movie genres. A comedy, for example, uh, made in America doesn't have to take place in America. Uh, a comedy doesn't have time and place rules. Uh, a comedy doesn't have to, by definition, take place in Northern Ireland after World War II, but before the Reagan administration or something. <laughs> Westerns speak to American values, for better or worse, our glorification of violence, gun culture, uh, less troublesome aspects of our culture as well, like individualism and hard work, things like that. There were a lot of factors that resulted in the decline of the Western. Uh, by the 1960s, the grand adventure of the Western didn't need to be in theaters. You know, television could more cheaply produce Westerns as TV shows. Bonanza, Wild Wild West, um, Maverick, The Lone Ranger, of course. Tons of shows. Uh, so not only did audiences not have to buy movie tickets to see Westerns anymore, but also the market was even more saturated with this very narrow genre. There are only so many white hats and black hats that you can see before people understand the formula and it loses the thrill. The greatest attribute of the Western, that being that it's always focused on frontier America and gets Americans excited about that, um, helped it fail because it always had to take place at one time in one section of the country. A new crop of filmmakers also changed the course of the Western, um, basically just by ignoring it. You know, Coppola, Spielberg, Lucas, Scorsese, you know, and a host of others were not entirely interested in the Western genre. You know, the, the John Ford era was coming to an end, I, I guess you could say. And uh, it's not that they, they, they didn't like Westerns, you know. It's just most of the time they were more interested in making Star Wars and Jaws and The Godfather and so forth. And the trends changed. Attempts around the turn of the century didn't really invigorate the genre, at least not enough. You know, Wild Wild West was a flop. Uh, True Grit and 310 to Yuma were great, uh, but they were remakes, you know, not fresh ideas. Then along came Django Unchained. You know, this movie obviously pays homage to older westerns, I mean, Django, obviously, um, but it doesn't feel like one. You know, it feels like a Quentin Tarantino movie. And I think that was the film that made studios and up-and-coming indie filmmakers think they could make westerns again, and they have. 
2015 had a lot of great movies, and for the first time in a while, a bunch of them were westerns. Most notably, The Hateful Eight, again by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, in spite of having, you know, the overture and the intermission and shot a certain way, it didn't feel like an old western. It felt like a Tarantino flick. Bone Tomahawk, uh, the other Kurt Russell western from last year. Um, also, you know, it didn't feel like an old western. Uh, it was a lot more graphic in its subject matter. Hard R, I guess you could say. Um, some people call it a western horror. Um, I'm not sure I feel that way. It's like 90% western and like 10% horror. But yeah, I could see that, maybe. I mean, it's certainly enough that you would notice it. People want something modern. They don't want the Lone Ranger. I mean, obviously, they don't want the Lone Ranger, <laughs> you know. Or, or maybe people do uh, want some of those old kinds of movies in, in that style. But modern filmmakers don't want to make westerns in the old style. I mean, not a lot of them. You know, Slow West from last year was one of my favorite films of 2015. Uh, it takes place when and where westerns take place. Um, but it was shot in New Zealand and directed by a Scottish man. It moves slowly and gradually, and it's about a lot of heartbreak and not a lot of violence. It doesn't have Old West American sensibilities. The Salvation, starring Mads Mikkelsen and Eva Green, um, was another one. Again, it, it takes place when and where uh, Western movies happen, but it was by a Danish director. So if you want to know what a Western directed by some of the uh, Dogma 95 guys would look like, um, this is your answer. I don't want to give away a lot of plot details about these movies. I want you to go out and see them fresh. They're, they're really great. I got about 10 minutes into The Ridiculous Six before turning back. Uh, no further comment. This year, uh, 2016, is actually going to be filled with a lot of new westerns. Uh, Jane Got a Gun, starring Natalie Portman. Uh, Forsaken, starring Kiefer Sutherland. The Kid, starring James Franco. Brimstone, starring Kit Harington. The Magnificent Seven, starring Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt. Um, just a lot of big stars in big movies, and they're all westerns. It's a revival, and, and personally, I'm very excited. You know, some won't be good, and some will, but one thing is for sure, the western genre is back.